This is part three of our videos on algebraic manipulation of our trigonometric functions. In this video, we'll focus on radical expressions. We'll multiply and divide radical expressions, simplify them, and we'll also talk about rationalizing the denominator. If I asked you to find square root of 15 times square root of 3, well, to multiply square roots, that is, multiplying radicals with the same index, all we need to do is multiply those two numbers together underneath a single square root sign. Now I want to warn you that if I instead had asked what is square root of 15 plus square root of 3, well unfortunately in that case, just like before, as soon as we see a plus, things are a little bit different. We cannot simply put the addition of those two numbers under a square root sign. Please don't do that. But let's go back to multiplying. Alright, multiplying 15 by 3 gives us the square root of 45. Likewise, division works the same way. If I had the square root of 90 divided by the square root of 3, I can combine that division under a single square root sign, and then get the square root of 30. But with radical expressions, I have to see if there's any way I can simplify these. Are there any square roots in these numbers that I can pull out? For instance, if I completely factor my 45, well 45 is equal to 5 times 9. And if I break those up, the square root of 5 times the square root of 9, well I know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3, so the square root of 45 can be simplified as 3 square root of 5. Let's look at square root of 30. Square root of 30, if I completely factor 30, I get 2 times 3 times 5. Well, I don't see any perfect squares in there, so I guess I'll leave my answer as square root of 30. Here's an example with some x's and a's and b's. If I have the expression square root of 50 times x cubed times a to the 6 times b, I'm going to try to find as many perfect squares as I can. Well, 50, I think 50 breaks up in terms of 2 times 25, and I'm pretty sure square root of 25 is a perfect square. Well, x cubed can break up into x squared times x, and x squared is a perfect square. a to the 6 is equal to a squared times a squared times a squared, because we remember that when I multiply exponents, I actually end up adding them. So a squared times a squared times a squared is equal to a to the 2 plus 2 plus 2, or a to the 6th. And again, these are perfect squares, and we leave b as is. Well, if I sort these, then I have square root of 25, square root of x squared, square root of a squared, and I have those three separate times, and then left over is a 2, an x, and a b, and I'll leave those together under a square root sign. And now I'll go ahead and find these square roots. Square root of 25 is 5, square root of x squared is x, square root of a squared is a, and again I have that three times, and then I have my leftover square root of 2xb. And I write that finally as 5x a to the cube times square root of 2xb. Now you could have looked at this and instead say, well, you know what, I know the square root of a to the sixth is just a cubed. So rather than break them up into perfect squares in individual packages, if you recognize that the square root of a to the sixth is a to the third, that's fine too, and we'll get the same answer if we do it this way. Oh boy. All right, so now we're dealing with these radical expressions in terms of trigonometric functions. What on earth are we going to do with this? Well, first of all, let's get it under a single square root sign. I'm multiplying these two different square roots together, so I can combine them under one giant square root sign. All right, the next thing I want to do is change those tangents and cotangents into sines and cosine. I get sine y over cosine y times sine y, and cosine y over sine y times sine squared. All right, again, I'm going to do my little trick of turning everything into a fraction and see if there's anything I can reduce out of here. Yes, I can divide out a cosine y out of my numerator and denominator, and I can divide out a sine y out of my numerator and denominator. And then I'm left with the square root of sine cubed y. All right, once I have that, I realize I have a perfect square in there. I have sine squared y times sine y. So I can break that up 
into two separate square roots, and my final answer is sine y times square root of sine y. And that is a far cry from where we started, so we really did simplify this radical expression. Okay, rationalizing the denominator. Remember when we talked about sine of 45 degrees way back in, I don't know, video 3? We couldn't leave the sine of 45 degrees as 1 over square root of 2. What we did is we multiplied the numerator and the denominator by square root of 2. And when we did that, we ended up with square root of 2 over 2. We rationalized the denominator. Well, we can do the same thing, but in terms of trigonometry. So if I give you this problem, what's the square root of sine y over cotangent y, and I ask you to rationalize the denominator, well, first of all, our typical trick is to change that cotangent into cosine y over sine y. Once I do that, okay, it's not looking much simpler now, well, I remember to get rid of complex fractions, I'm going to multiply my numerator and my denominator by the LCD, which in this case is just sine y. So if I multiply my numerator and my denominator by sine y, then I end up with sine squared y over cosine y. Okay, that's taking me from the square root of sine y over cotangent y down to square root of sine squared y over cosine y. And let's go from here. What I'll do next is I'll split up that square root because I want to get rid of the square root sign in my denominator. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to multiply my numerator and my denominator by square root of cosine y. When I do that, I end up with, in my numerator, the square root of sine squared y, which is just equal to sine y, times the square root of cosine y, all over, well, let's see, the square root of cosine y times the square root of cosine y, that's just equal to cosine y. So this is my final answer when I rationalize my denominator. And there we've done some algebraic manipulations of trigonometric functions with radical expressions, multiplying, dividing, simplifying, as well as rationalizing the denominator.